Slow living doesn't exactly come naturally to me. I'm a millennial, the first generation of the internet age. Raised in the digital world, we're at the forefront of experiencing everything get quicker and quicker. I'm used to being able to call someone at the click of a button. I'm used to getting immediate answers, whether that was on Ask Jeeves or Google. I'm used to seeing people more on social media than I do in real life. And I'm used to new technology developing to save me time. But even with this saved time, I still felt busy all of the time. I never shut off. I thought I always had to be doing something and I felt guilty if I wasn't. I was chasing more achievements and more approval. And even though I wasn't keeping up with the Kardashians, I always felt like I had to keep up. I just didn't know what I was keeping up with and why. I was going through the motions of life just like everyone else. And I wondered why I was always so stressed, anxious and such an overthinker. Eventually I realised that I wanted to make a change in my life because I wasn't happy. Enter slow living. I think that slow living is the path to mindfulness, to finding our joy and even the way to finding our way back to ourselves when the noise of life keeps trying to drown us out. It's not really about doing things more slowly, more so just doing things at a pace that feels good and I still struggle with this and have to remind myself of why it's so important. But I feel like so long as I can carve out even small moments of the day which feel like they're at the right pace of me, it means that I can find my own escape. An escape where I don't have to ask for time off work so I can go on a holiday. It's an escape that I can choose to have at any time and at any place. So slowly but surely I've been making changes that feel better paced for me and I want to share a few of the things that have made the most difference. Previously in the mornings I would have my cup of tea whilst reading a book or in between doing yoga and this is still mindful I know but I still felt like I was waking up thinking about something I had to do. I've begun to really challenge myself to just sit and do nothing. So now, as soon as I wake up and my husband is having his 30 minutes on the toilet, I'm also having my peaceful time on the sofa with my cup of tea. I now actively try to do nothing, and yes, this is an active thing. I just sit there looking outside of the window, even though I don't have much of a view. I let my mind wander. I remember the dreams that I had last night. I think about the things that make me happy, and sometimes I just think about how good this cup of tea is. My mind's a little too used to stimulation. It's too used to having a million things going on at once. And I've noticed how unhealthy that is, because sometimes I'll go on my laptop to do something, open up my browser with a hundred tabs and I completely forget what I went on my laptop for and that's just not how I want to be. In the book The Planting Seeds it says, not doing anything, just enjoying ourselves and whatever is around us is a very deep practice because we all have an energy within us that constantly pushes us to do this or that. We cannot sit or lie still and enjoy ourselves or enjoy the beautiful sky. If we aren't doing something, we can't stand it. And this is it, we're so hardwired to do things and we reject boredom. But boredom can be good for us. It teaches us patience, it makes us more present, and it's been scientifically proven to help with creativity. So I might look like an absolute weirdo just sitting here doing nothing, but after a while, it feels seriously good. I love getting my life organized on Notion. I love being able to send messages to my family and friends on WhatsApp, and I love being able to write newsletters and send them out instantly. But more and more lately, I'm really enjoying putting pen to paper. When I write by hand, I come under the spell of the forms and the magic and mystery of who I am and how I show up in this world. The confused, shaky self, the graceful, easy moments, or the part that doesn't know what to say next. The letters and the marks left behind, the tracks of my inner journey through this life. When I write by hand, the familiar shapes tumble out and make new combinations. Most of us are probably faster typers than we are writers. We find it easy now to throw our thoughts onto a Word document, but writing on paper really forces me to slow down and think about what I'm writing. I get more lost in the actual act of writing. I feel like I'm actually able to release my thoughts rather than gaining 100 new ones, and so I feel way more calm.
There's a saying that you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with, but I think we have to reframe that now because we're also the average of what we consume. I think it's one of the main reasons why so many of us feel so pressed for time. My information diet used to look like this. Every self-help and self-improvement book possible. I'd watch so many study and productivity YouTubers, watching videos on time management, calendar blocking, and how to get things done faster. So it's no wonder really that I felt the need to be constantly busy. I now haven't read a self-improvement book in over a year because I really needed a break, but the ones on my reading list now are ones that I've been really selective over. I now don't watch productivity YouTubers unless their videos are really relevant to me, and I've unfollowed every single account on Instagram that makes me feel pressured because I hate feeling pressured. Slowing down is associated with unplugging completely, and I do love cutting down on technology, but with the world we live in right now, it's hard to get away from technology altogether. So whilst I do try and turn off my phone when I can, I'm also more selective about what I take in. Instead of consuming content that encourages me to speed it up, I consume content that encourages me to live in the present. I saw a great tweet recently which said, I don't treat my calendar as a blank surface to pile events onto. I think of it as a ledger of how many times I've traded my time away. People seem to be really proud of being busy, which I find kind of weird. I don't want to be doing things all day, having meetings during my lunch or in the evening when that's time that I want for myself or with my husband. I don't want every weekend accounted for for the next two months. And even though plans are important because it means that you can build relationships, I'm also really selective of what that means. So by this, I mean creating time for real relationships over networking. Networking is made to seem like such a crucial skill in today's world, but to be honest, I'm so tired of this concept of getting ahead. I don't want to meet people for a coffee or have Zoom calls to discuss work or projects just for the sake of my goals. I want to really get to know people. I want to build genuine connections with them. We should be building relationships, not just connections that can take us further. The issue with today's culture is we are super goal driven and this in itself is not a bad thing. But I feel like we tend to chase goal after goal only focusing on the outcome. So maybe you go to the gym because you want to be a Gymshark athlete or you take up a hobby because you want to monetize it somehow. But I feel like this completely takes away the feeling of play and it pushes us to do things faster. So as you guys know, I've been trying to get back into art recently, and truthfully, I do think it would be really cool to be able to sell art online. But I'm trying to detach myself from any goals so I can just enjoy the process. I'm doing it because I want to do it, because I enjoy it. And by doing that, I can slow down and just enjoy the process because I'm not rushing to achieve anything. When we focus on outcomes, we also have to fight guilt a lot more. So you might think, I should be working instead of watching a movie. I should go to the gym instead of having a lie-in, even though I'm really tired. I can use today as an opportunity to get ahead of myself at work, rather than taking the day off, even though I've earned it. But this guilt isn't justified. The world's not going to end because we took a day off. Rest is just as important. Living slow in today's fast-paced world is not easy. Everything in this world is telling you to go faster whilst you're trying to keep up. But realise that slowing down is a choice. Even if you're the busiest person in the world, you can take any element of your life and choose to approach it in a way that's more mindful. And that in itself is slowing down.
Fighting the resistance in the world to slow down is fighting for magic. It's fighting to feel and live and to rebreathe, to not be swept away and to find our feet and make our way back to a more fulfilling life.